And what is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 155 of the Designated Players Podcast. We're back with MLS History Retold, and we've got some cool ones today. We start off with the 2000 Western Conference Final, where the only sudden death minigame in MLS history was needed to decide the winner of the Sporting Kansas City, or KC Wizards, and LA Galaxy tie. That is followed by a deep dive into the LA Galaxy's victorious run in the 2000 CONCACAF Champions Cup. My name is Andrew, joined by my good buddy Connor, and this is MLS History Retold. How's it going, buddy? You seem like you've gotten a new uh, new area. I was just about to ask, am I like phasing into the background right now? <laughs> no. I feel like I see like the line of the upper deck in my hair. <laughs> it's just your bad hair, bro. It's just your bad hair. <laughs> yes, um, I have a new background. I'm at Arrowhead Stadium today. Doing it, doing it live from Arrowhead? Yes, I've... I've whipped out the time machine. I've gone back to the year 2000, and I'm going to commentate live for you. <laughs> That's something we should do. We, it's like scarf of the week, but like in like grab a picture of whatever we're talking about. I like that. Before we jump into these stories, I got to know what scarf are you rocking for for this one? Well, I'm talking about the the same team, basically the same season, the same scenario that I did last week. So I just brought out the same scarf. I don't have an SKC one. So here is my New York City scarf that you can't see because it's phasing out. But yeah, it's in there. Maybe you shouldn't do that. Maybe it phased out for a reason. My Maybe mine is phased. mine's a stretch. So you, yours is a stretch. Mine's a stretch. No, mine's a real stretch. This does relate. I promise you. You just have to listen to the rest of my story. Here we go. Real Madrid. Okay. I'll let you think about it for a second. Don't we won't say anything. No guesses, but I'll let you think about it. Okay. It would have been Good. better if it was Barcelona. Who? Brocolona? Europa-lona? Refalona? <laughs> Only buys players from MLS Alona. <laughs> and then doesn't play him Alona? <laughs> oh, we're toxic. Um <laughs> All right, I'm going to send it over to you. You can go right away. Am I first? Are yeah, we supposed are. to go in chronological order? Yeah, we are. This is chronicle. Chron- blah, 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 blah. Yeah, <laughs> words are hard. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about the 2000 playoff sudden death mini game between the Kansas City Wizards and the LA Galaxy. If you listen to uh, the, the MLS history episode from last week then you'll have heard me talk about the 2000 Casey Wizards season where spoiler alert they did the double supporter shield and MLS cup so sorry if it kind of gave away the result of this Senate of death mini game but uh we did briefly cover it last time however I will go into a, a bit more detail specifically about the sudden death mini game today uh rather than the whole season so if you want to hear about the whole season, go check out our last episode. Uh, if you just want to hear about the Sun Death mini game, then listen in. Uh, as always, source for this one, uh, I used a little bit of Wikipedia, and there was a great podcast on this one uh, from the Final Whistle podcast, which I think is a SKC type podcast where they spoke about this game in particular, the Sun Death mini game. So good anecdotes in here that I'll mention, uh, and shout out to them for this great uh, for the the information on this one. Um. So, if you didn't listen to the last episode, I'll give you um, a little mention or or tune up on the playoff format for this season's playoffs. So, this is a best of three series where it was scored as three points for a win, one point for a draw. Similar to the regular season, and first team to get five points would move on to the next round. So, one of the issues with the 2000 playoff season is that they got rid of the penalty shootout after each game if it was tied. So the playoff format that is in place would work previously because there wouldn't be any draws. You would play, if it was tied after 90, you would go into a penalty shootout and ultimately a winner would be decided. In 2000, they got rid of that. So now there are draws. So you could potentially get into a situation where typically it's a best of three series uh, however, you could get a situation where you draw all three games, or maybe you get into a situation where one team wins one game, one team wins another game. Uh, in this case, 
it was the LA uh it was a draw in the first game between the Galaxy and the Wiz. It was 0-0, an absolute barn burner of a match. Uh however, the second game would be a little bit better. Second game at the Rose Bowl, the LA Galaxy would win this one 2 to 1 after an extra time golden goal from Daniel Calif. So this would set up a winner go home for the KC Wiz. Um, however, if they were to win the game, then it would set up this sudden death mini game, which is what we're talking about today. So I'm sure you could put the pieces together. In the third game, uh, sorry, let me take it a step back. I want to talk a little bit about the teams before we dive into the the third game and ultimately the sudden death mini game. So the Galaxy and the KC Wiz had a pretty good rivalry at this point. These two teams did not like each other. Um, and so Final Whistle was talking a little bit about this, and they were able to get a quote from Peter Vermees, who was playing for the KC Wiz at this time, who mentioned that before the third game at Arrowhead Stadium, which is where I am right now live, um, Vermees said that Kobe Jones had walked by the KC Wiz locker room ahead of the game and yelled something into the KC's locker room, something to the effect of, we're going to kick your PG butt, which Vermees said really fired up the team even more than the already sort of rivalry between the two teams. So you could argue that was a big mistake from Kobe Jones and that it, it only fueled the, the Wiz to win this game even more. Um, and win the game they did. So let's get into the game, um, and then we'll get into the sudden death. So it wasn't a very high-scoring game, which is pretty fitting for these two teams. These two were easily the best two defensive teams in the league this season. With the KC Wiz, let me get my numbers right on this. Uh, where is it? I don't think I have the numbers on me, but the KC was, I want to say was maybe 29 goals they conceded that season and the Galaxy may have conceded, I think, 37, uh, somewhere around that range. And then the next highest after that was like in the 50s. So these two were far and away the best defensive teams uh, in the league that season, with SKC honestly being one of the best defensive teams of all time. So with little, um, with little surprise, the third game between the two of them would end up being a 1-0 win for the KC Wiz. A lot of defensive work uh, with the lone goal being a penalty from Miklos Mol Molnar. Um, and if you don't know about Miklos Molnar, uh, again, listen to the episode last from uh, last week. And we talk a little bit more about him. But he was a hugely crucial player for the KC Wiz in this whole playoff. Uh, and will continue to be crucial for them. Wink, wink, going forward. Uh, so one thing I did want to touch upon for the goal itself in the uh, before the sudden death mini game, it was a penalty scored by Molnar, scored by Molnar, uh, and the penalty was conceded by Daniel Califf. If you remember that, that was the the one that scored the golden goal to set up the situation anyway to give Galaxy the advantage going into the third game. Uh, and the the bad luck for him wouldn't stop there. So let's get into the sudden death mini game. Um, sorry. So we're tied right now in total points. Man, I'm all over the place for this episode. We're tied right now. <laughs> we're tied right now. Um, with the first game being a draw, the Galaxy getting a win in the second game and the Casey Wiz getting a win in the third game. So in this situation, considering it is supposed to be best of three, they had to do a sudden death mini game. And Final Whistle was talking about this game a little bit here. And it felt like MLS was not ready for a situation like this. As I mentioned before, they took out the penalty shootouts. And this, I believe, was the first playoff year without them. So they didn't they weren't really prepared for a situation like this. And it showed in the fact that Final Whistle had mentioned that when the game was live, the announcers didn't even know what to call this. I think they kind of 
people I think have somewhat settled on it being the sudden death mini game, but it went by a number of names during the uh, actual like broadcast of the game. So really, nobody kind of had an idea of what exactly was going to happen here now that the, the two teams were tied after a best of three. So. So let's get into the sudden death mini game here. Um, it would not take long for the KC Wiz to get a result and end this game and win the series. It took about six minutes into the sudden death mini game where Mo Johnston sacrifices his body to win the ball against Daniel Califf, again mentioned, um, which ultimately led to the game winning goal by who else but Miklos Molnar. The guy that was incredibly clutch for the KC Wiz. And now I just mentioned that Mo Johnston sacrificed his body to win the ball from Daniel Califf. Final whistle was talking about this one a little bit too. But as a result of the challenge that Johnston went into to win that ball, which ultimately won them the game, and you could argue, argue ultimately won them MLS Cup, he had to get 13 stitches from taking a cleat from Califf, I believe, to the face. Um, but, you know, I'm sure Mo Johnson would argue that that was well worth it considering it ended up in the game winning goal. Not only that, Mo Johnston with the 13 stitches then went on to play MLS Cup final, which was not far after it. So I, I mean, hats off to Mo Johnston. Talk about grit and determination to continue to play while having 13 stitches is insane. Um, and apparently there's a picture of his bloodied up face from the challenge hung up in the Budweiser brew house at Children's Mercy Park, uh, which is sick. And I would love to see that someday. And I hope to do. Uh, but if, I think if you want, you can Google the picture and you should be able to find it. Uh, it's a really great picture. And really, I feel like shows the uh, the grit from this Casey Wiz team to to be able to come back from the deficit and ultimately take down the galaxy. Um, and as I mentioned in the last episode, but I'll give a quick reminder here. After winning this game, the Wiz would go on to defeat the Chicago Fire in the MLS Cup final and would take home the Shield Cup double season, making this one of the best MLS seasons of all time. Remember, remember when you made fun of me because words were hard and that now you can't talk? I just I don't know what my notes were. They're just like all over the place. I did not. I didn't structure my notes very well let's say that karma is really fun i love it um, that's okay nobody listens to our MLS history episodes anyway wow the disrespect <laughs> it's almost like it's almost like if somebody were to share it and show other people oh uh, yeah 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 that's it, that's it you're right you're right we need to uh we need to get on a um dp pod away days tour and just go see all the stadiums we haven't seen yet and uh try and get in and see some of those uh some of those really cool areas. Catch yeah. that picture. Are you, are you funding this trip? You're the one with the job. <laughs> you had a job. I remember. Yeah. $500 a year. <laughs> That's right. You lived in Kentucky. It probably cost a dollar a year to live there. <laughs> Kentucky was way more expensive than here. <laughs> Bad. Anyways, um, super cool. Really love that. Um, again, unique, right? When we were in the in the early stages of trying to make this league you know, enjoyable and watchable. Um, you had to do crazy things. And this was one of them, the three legged. I wonder what happens maybe this year with the third leg or the three legged uh, or the um, best of three series for round one. Will we see another sudden death mini game? <laughs> Will this no longer be the only sudden death mini game? Yeah. Uh... Hopefully, hopefully it is. I mean, I think that's part of the novelty is it's the only one in history and hopefully will continue to be the only one in history. Yeah, here's here's hoping, but you never know. Daddy Don, dude, dude's out there. So you never know. Went to Oneonta, for gosh sakes, you know, you know, what happened to the kids over there. Oh, yeah, unfortunately. Crazy. <laughs> uh, during that year, uh, may, not necessarily during the year, but over five days. We had what is called the CONCACAF Champions Cup. So before the now MLS-dominated CONCACAF Champions League, 
because MLS is clear. The CONCACAF Champions Cup was the premier tournament of that region. In 2000, it was the 36th edition of the tournament. This thing has been going on since 19... 2030, 1964. It's pretty crazy to think about. Like, we didn't even have a professional league until four years before this game kicked off, and it had been going on for 30 years before that. Kind of crazy to think about. This tournament, like I mentioned, was going on for 36 years. Only once had another team from the United States won it. That was DC United in 1998, which I'm surprised we haven't talked about. We might need to do a MLS history revisited and go past things that we may have missed. Um, Three spots in this tournament were awarded to MLS sides. One for the MLS Cup, one for the MLS Cup runner-up, and one for the Supporters' Shield. In 1999, while qualifying for this tournament, DC United did the double, Shield and the Cup. So MLS lost a spot, and they only sent two teams, DC United and the LA Galaxy. However, this didn't necessarily remove a spot. Like, MLS didn't lose a team. They lost the opportunity to add a third team because a supporter Shield champion in the 1998 to 2000 um, iterations of the tournament got a ch- the supporter Shield got a chance to play a play-in game against the Summer League winner from Liga MX. If you remember any of our old conversations, by the way, of how Champions League uh, seating is awarded, this is exactly up this alley. It is just absolute nonsense. Um, this whole thing about the Supporter Shield winner getting to play a play-in round just further proves my point that the Supporter Shield has always been disrespected as the premier trophy of this league. Uh, when the loser of a playoff final gets an automatic bid to the quarterfinals, but the best team over 28 games has to get a play-in, The disrespect is unbelievable. Anyways, get off my soapbox. This was also a rather unique tournament. Uh, As late as 1998, the CONCACAF tournament was designated in multiple group stages. So 14 teams who had not auto-qualified went into groups of three or four and played against each other to earn the right to enter a second group stage where they would be put into two groups of three to determine the last two spots in the final tournament against the auto-qualified sides. Yep, it didn't make any sense. It still doesn't make sense. Fast forward to 2002, the tournament expanded to 16 teams and was a straight March Madness-style bracket, where the usual eight teams, it was eight teams in 2000, expanded to 16 teams in uh, 2002. Now we know that Champions League is a group stage again. Um, with play-in games and things like that. So they've gone back to craziness. Uh, qualification through CONCACAF Nations League and CONCACAF League and all this other stuff. So this tournament still hasn't quite figured out how they're going to get things done, but that's okay. In 2000, the tournament was unlike uh, the past or current installations where it was not played over months like you would expect. However, they picked five days smack in the middle of January to play this Massive intercontinental tournament. It was hosted in Southern California from January 16th to January 21st. That meant no need to balance MLS season, preseason, other tournaments, anything like that. Just get in and play. They would start their tournament off against Real España from Honduras. Not a lot of information on this game, but the game was played to a 0-0 draw and went on to penalty kicks where LA won 5-3. It's okay that there's not a lot of information here because the next rounds are where the fun comes anyway. In the semifinals, they were drawn with MLS Giants, DC United. It was Ziggy Schmidt versus Bruce Arena, the match of the year for MLS supporters. DC United were by far the favorites to win this uh, tournament this year. They'd done the double the year before, won the 1998 version, and in the same year, won the Copa Interamericana. Another thing that we definitely need to figure out what happened and talk about. Add it to the list. Penalties were once again the name of the game in this semifinal. In the 29th minute, everybody's favorite LA Galaxy head coach, Greg Vanny, steps up and slots away a penalty, followed by a 48-minute penalty for Marco Echever. Legendary MLS goalkeeper Kevin Hartman came up massive in the game, 
keeping off many DC United attempts, including two PK efforts from Marco Echeverry once again, as well as pod legend Ben Olsen. At the end of the match, it went into penalties. That's where that came from. Sorry, they didn't get, I forgot to add, they didn't have three penalties in normal time. The game ended 1-1, went into penalties, uh, and then he kept out Echeverry and Ben Olsen. LA did not miss any of their chances, and they moved on to the final game against Honduras's CD Olympic, Olympia. So no Mexican teams did they have to come up against in this tournament, which is very interesting. In Memorial Coliseum, the match kicks off, and fans were treated to a flyer of a Champions League final, for lack of a better term. Olympia opens the scoring by, you guessed it, another penalty conceded by an absolutely blatant handball by none other than our favorite talking head, Alexi Lalas. The ball gets floated into the box. He goes to head it away, misses it, and it just hits him square in the hand and drops straight to the floor. Penalty is given. Olympia steps up and tucks it away. However, just two minutes later, he would atone for his error. As he climbs highest to meet a corner, flicks it towards the near post of the goal, and right onto the head, of current Chicago Fire manager Ezra Hendrickson, who finishes from close range. Then, three minutes later, Lalas plays a hopeless floated ball into the box that is not dealt with by Olympia. Toby Jones gets onto the end of it and finishes a one-timed left-footed effort to the back stick. Right after the halftime whistle, Olympia would get one back. After a service was, dis- was allowed from the right side, it found an unmarked striker named Robert DeLima, who headed home past Kevin Hart. It was the 78th minute when Hendrickson bombed forward, played a combination pass with Sinfuegos, gets in on goal, and fires it to the roof of the net. Now, both times he scored, he did his patented celebration, where he took his shirt, put it over his head, and ran around all crazy. But he revealed underneath his jersey a shirt bar- barring the face of legendary reggae musician Bob Marley, which led me down a little bit of a rabbit hole to figure out why. I came up with this pretty cool backstory. Hendrickson is a native of St. Vincent, which is in the uh, Caribbean, which Bob Marley, of course, is from. Um, And he was a massive Bob Marley fan. He said he always used to listen to his music before games to calm calm down, get in the zone. And Bob Marley was also a massive world figure as well at the time. So to tribute to him what he meant to Ezra, the Caribbean, and the world in general, he would wear that shirt and would show it off after every goal. Thought that was pretty neat. After the trophy was lifted, the LA Galaxy. Let me re- let me rephrase that. So in the 78th minute, Hendrickson scored the the leading goal, and LA would be able to hold on, and win the 2000 Concacaf Champions Cup. After the trophy was lifted, it was clear that LA Galaxy had qualified for the 2001 FIFA Club World Cup. However, they never got the chance to participate in this tournament because FIFA's marketing partner, the ISL, had collapsed, accumulating over $300 million in debt. Now, I know what you're thinking, Connor. If only they had ProRel, they never would have had to fold, right? Because you would have never had this debt. It would never been a closed system, and they would have been able to figure it out. Me too. Gosh darn it. During 2001, the Club World Cup uh, was going to be in a group stage. They had already drawn groups before they folded. And LA Galaxy were drawn into groups with a Ghanaian team, Hearts of Oak, Japan's Jubilo Iwata, and Spain's Real Madrid. Sparking where the scarf comes from. This Real Madrid team contained the lights of Roberto Carlos, Zidane, and other massive legends. And LA were denied the chance to put themselves up against the best of the best at this time. This wasn't a Seattle Sounders win and then play Real Madrid. These guys were going to play the best team in Spain. And they got it pulled away from them. While they did not get the chance to challenge themselves on the world stage, they did prove to the Confederation that MLS, while a new league, was ready to take on anyone which is why we proved the same thing by not winning another tournament for 22 years. But that's okay, because we're massive now. That is the story of the LA Galaxy's 2000 run to the CONCACAF Champions Cup. 
my sources for this were a cool YouTube video from CONCACAF uh, YouTube channel. USsoccerplayers.com had a really good breakdown of the of the run, as well as some Wikipedia. So what you're saying is Seattle wasn't actually the first, technically no, so speaking. They were the third, technically. They were just the first to do it in the modern era. Yeah, the first to do it in 22 years, as you said. Yes. But that's okay, because now we're massive. We are so massive. I feel bad. A big, big game tonight. Yeah. We're yeah. deciding who we're who we're sending to represent us in the final. Who do you want? We'll ask. Uh I mean our current form, probably LAFC. Yeah, healthy LAFC, absolutely. But I think Philly I think Philly pulls this out. It'd be tough. It's it's at LAFC, is it isn't it? It is. It is. It's gonna be a tough one, but I'm excited. It's gonna be a great game. I can't wait to watch it. Um for Philly's regular season's sake. I kind of hope that they <laughs> they don't win. So no, they can I, I hope the season. I hope they do win, so they have an excuse. Seattle, oh man, Seattle misses a playoffs for the first time in thirteen years. What's anybody talking about? Champions League, as they should. Correct. That's my point. I, I, I mean, listen, I don't mind. I don't hate uh, Philly, but I don't love them either, so I don't care. But yeah. I, I want whoever is going to win it for us. That's who I want in the final. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. Neutral answer. <laughs> yeah, good answer. All right, y'all. Thanks so much for listening to episode 155 of the Designated Players Podcast. Stick around for more MLS history as we get on. Lots of really cool ones coming up. Uh, possibly a collaboration with a few uh, few of our friends. But what I'll say is definitely confirmed is the Brimstone Cup and the Water Fountain photo shoot. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait for that. Do you know what that is? I don't know. Oh, you're, I can't wait to share that with you. Um, but we will also be talking about the two referee experiment through the 2000 U.S. Open Cup, which is a phenomenal story that we are working with uh, U.S. Open Cup on Twitter to get some information for. So stick around for that if you are enjoying this. If you're not enjoying this, still stick around for it. Listen to it, share it, find somebody else who would enjoy it. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Make sure you go and follow on all social media platforms. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Just look up the Designated Players podcast. You'll find us uh, anywhere you get your podcasts so you know when our next episode goes live. And thanks again for listening. And we will see you on the next episode of the Designated Players podcast. See ya.